Today we're going to look at page 16 of Exploring Kentucky's Mighty Oaks. Uh, this is the information actually about the writing piece and the contest. Um, so we're going to look briefly at the rules. Um, grades 6 through 12 can compete, and since you're a 6th grader you can compete. Uh, we can only compete in the writing contest. Uh, you can only have one entry. And all entries must be the property of, become the property of the conservation district. The top three writing entries from our school will be submitted. And only those three will have to fill out this little form. So don't worry about that form yet. We're going to skip the artwork because we're not participating in that. And I want to read the writing directions to you. Entry may not exceed 1,000 words, printed single side. No photographs or artwork may include, be included with the written work. It is suggested that the written entry take the form of a persuasive or informative explanatory. Students should write from the perspective of an informed writer to a less informed reader, and they may be in the form of a letter, article, editorial, or speech. It should persuade the reader to take action towards good wildlife conservation practices. The work should be from the student author and avoid plagiarism from this source or other sources. Sources should be cited. Do not use the conservation writing in Jim Claypool art as your tabloid, tabloid as your only source. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, you cannot have over a thousand words, which is if you read your directions, it's a minimum of five paragraphs with at least four sentences in each paragraph is what I put in your Google Classroom. Um, your first paragraph is going to be an introductory paragraph, just like you've talked about in both fifth grade and you just wrote a piece in your sixth grade class. Then you're going to have three body paragraphs. Those body paragraphs are trying to persuade us to take action, to have good wildlife conservation practices for trees. So last week, you gave me three reasons that we should protect trees. You can develop those three reasons into your three body paragraphs if you would like. If you want to choose something else, you may. It's your essay. But you have to have three reasons, three separate paragraphs about why we should protect or conserve trees. Your fifth paragraph will be your conclusion at the end. So let's go over that again. You're going to have five paragraphs. The first one is your introductory paragraph. You will have three body paragraphs. Each body paragraph is going to go over one reason why we should conserve trees. And then you're going to have your conclusion or your summary paragraph. Overall, your writing may not exceed 1,000 words. Okay, so let's look at how it will be great. There's a point system for writing. You will get 30 points for your purpose or audience. You establish and maintain a purpose, and you communicate with your audience, and you employ a suitable tone. Your purpose is to persuade a less informed reader to conserve trees. You have to stay focused on that purpose to gain your 30 points. Organization, 20 points. This is a logical order, coherence, transition, and organizational signals. This is you are going to have five paragraphs, an introduction that leads into three body paragraphs. Each of those three body paragraphs helps us to understand why we should conserve or protect our trees, followed by a summary or conclusion paragraph. 20 points for idea development slash support and evidence of research. Okay. You have to support your, de your, your paragraphs. You can't just say, I think this. Do not copy from this magazine or from any other internet website. That is called plagiarism. You can read for information, and as you learn things, you need to write all of your own sentences in your own words. There should not be sentences that you have copied and pasted from anywhere. You should support what you are writing with the facts that you have learned. 
And then the last 30 points is the language, correctnesses, sentences. This includes word choice, usage, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and sentences that are varied in structure and length and constructed effectively. When you guys wrote for me last week, I asked you to write in complete sentences. Those sentences sometimes were not complete sentences. A complete sentence must have a subject and a verb. There were some of you that I told you you needed to work on your capitalization or punctuation in your sentences. And there were others that I told you to work on your spelling. If you do not punctuate, capitalize, spell, and write complete sentences, that is 30 points off of your essay. So the highest you can make would be a 70 if you are having problems with that. If you need help, please make sure you ask me. This is Wednesday's assignment, and it's not due until Friday. However, several of you have been asking about extra credit and bonus work, so I did say that you can, I went ahead and gave it to you today, which is Monday, and you may start working on it today, and you may turn it in any time up through Thursday for 20 bonus points automatically added to your grade. So if you're worried about one of these things, a good thing to do would be to check with me, get some help, uh, but to also get ahead of the game and finish this essay early and get it turned in so you could have your bonus points. As always, if you have questions, please let me know.